I'm Jesse Hazlett, and I just make big pieces of art. <laughs> I moved to California whenever I was 14, and in Colorado, where I live, uh, in Cortez, Colorado, there's like 7,000 people, and there was no evidence of graffiti there at all. There was no art culture, really. And so I moved to, to outside of Santa Barbara, and I would go to to visit my mother every, every summer. And I started riding the trains when I was 14. And I would see all the graffiti in Los Angeles. And I was like, what the hell is this? You know, like, this is, um, this is what I have to do. I, I don't know why. I, I just thought I was like an angry, unhappy kid that was just moved from a 7,000 person town into a 200,000 person town. With, and there was no Native Americans. <laughs> so like, well, I mainly hung out with, with Navajo and Utes, and so I didn't know what to do with myself. And so I just started writing on everything, you know, and I was so whack for so long because I didn't have any influence, you know, I didn't know anybody. And then um, I started slowly meeting graffiti writers. I met Gustavo, and um, we started going bombing together. And, um, and then that just perpetuated itself like I just I started going to art school and um, I started to analyze like kind of like like my intent and like um, what I was what like like what my reasoning behind doing graffiti what really was and I, I realized that uh, the I thought I thought it was like this major protest and I was like I was reaching the people I was being an anarchist and like doing my work for the the revolution in my mind, you know. But then I realized that like I was just writing on people's property and only talking to other graffiti writers and I wasn't reaching anybody. I wasn't talking to anybody but other graffiti writers. And um, typically um, it, it, it didn't go anywhere. It was, just, it was just writing pretty much just to myself and dealing with my own problems and in a public manner. And so I decided that um, the buffalo and the birds were a lot better way to reach people as a, as a and, and still do like a, a form of civil disobedience. Because what I've found through protest, because I've done a lot of protest when I was younger, and I found that it didn't do anything, especially as it got more, it turned more into a parade than a protest. And I found that um, those protests, they weren't doing anything. They weren't changing anything. They had like police escorts, like that would, I mean, it was so it was exactly like a parade. Like they shut down streets for you. They had a police escort from point A to point B and you go to point B and you, everybody yells. And I also yeah. noticed that like people would be going along yelling these things. And I realized that like, if you yell at somebody, they're not gonna listen to you. So what I'm trying to do with my work is I'm trying to create a conversation that is not yelling. It's not in your face saying like, fuck Bush. It's saying, hey, we need to talk about this because this affects us all. This is, um, we need to be more compassionate. Like that's the end all goal of my work is to create a sense of compassion in humans. Um, a lot of my work starts um, with visions that I, I get generally late at night, and um, I don't necessarily always understand them, like, initially. Um, a lot of times the, the true meaning is revealed as, I, as I'm working. Yeah. It takes a while for me to interpret it even to myself. But I was drawn towards the heron and the buffalo, and then... Um, the bombers, I was, I was working on another project, and, which was a bomber, and uh, I just decided to, melt, to, to mold the two together, and, um, and it took a while to, to realize that like, they both represented something very similar. They both represented two major mistakes of, of the American culture, the, the near annihilation and extinction of the buffalo which also, like, I mean, they, they could be tied in with the Native Americans because we push them, not necessarily to the brink of extinction, but we are wiping out that culture in this country. 
And the, the bombers, like, they represent World War II, which I think should have been the last war that humans went into. That, that so I have my first and only son. <laughs> well, I might have more, but my, my first son named Kingston, he just turned a year yesterday. And a lot of people have actually asked me about um, if my work has changed because of having a child. And if anything, I think it's more, it's more urgent to continue on the path that I'm going because um, he's been born into a really crazy time. And it's, it's really scary. I hope that, that things, by the time he gets to be my age, are in a lot better, I hope that we're in a lot better of a situation. Um, and I feel that my work, I typically address social situations um, or I, I address like worldly situations that I think need to, to be looked at more, or with more scrutiny. And um, that's, I don't see it changing. I don't, I, if, until, until like the world starts to lighten up, um, I don't see my work starting to lighten up.